future. Talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. that microphone. Hey, folks, greetings and salutations. You have tuned in to one of the leading shows here on UBN Radio Network, Dr. Judy WTF, which, of course, for those of you that are new, and thank you, What the Freud. And today is our last show for the year, and uh, there's, no, there's no crying tracks on track. And we are going to be talking a little bit about feeling disconnected over the holidays. Um... The thing is, sometimes we challenge with meltdowns and command performances, as a friend of mine called it. He would go to a family function and go, oh, I got to do another command performance. <laughs> and particularly feeling disconnected from your family during the holidays. So we're going to gonna address that. But I'd um, like to introduce the world now famous author and psychologist, Dr. Judy Rosenberg. Her book is out has been out. It's going great. Oh, thank you. And um, you can get it on Amazon in paperback form as well as Kindle. Not but, yet. The Kindle, we're working on that. Are you Should working on Kindle still? Should be an upload still? Um, oh, okay. in the next, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And how about Nook? Is it going to be on there too for yeah, uh, be, Barnes & Noble? Uh, yeah, we're working on that. We've okay. got the paperback. So now. it's in paperback. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It looks like this. And... Um, we're going to read a couple of, um, you know, get a little closer. There you go. It's easier as a book. It's got a picture of, a smashing picture of Dr. Judy on the back. And one of the big exciting things about the book that we like is um, uh, that she has a section after every chapter entitled Think Like a Shrink. Because the goal is for you, the reader, and listener, to think like a shrink, meaning you're not ne needing to be dependent on a therapist forever. And so I just wanted to read you the end of one section, Think Like a Shrink, to give you an idea. It's, a, it's actually the ending of, I think it's the first chapter. Connecting the dots. And these are just, these are just uh, you know, bullet points. Childhood is a hostage situation. I had to put that in. Your favorite line. My favorite there line. There it is. <laughs> you are not the cause of part one of your life. Mother-infant disconnect and father-infant disconnect is the primary preventable cause of your childhood wounds. Your symptoms are clues that you're emotionally injured at cause. Expressing repressed painful feelings in a therapeutic manner is your direct pathway to healing. You want to you want to shortcut the whole shebang? Your direct pathway to healing. And lastly, once you dismantle the old and wounded blueprint of your past, you can begin to decode your past, recode your future, and be the cause of the better outcomes of your life. Now, you have to remember also the show is on Stitcher. It's on iTunes, soon to be iHeartRadio. And um, if you want to be a guest on our show, all you do is pick up the phone and call us. Because this is a call-in show, and we would love to hear about um, uh, and we'd love to hear about a Christmas or holiday meltdown with your family. And we I'm, could, we I'm could having them in my office as we speak. <laughs> are you really? And yeah, I really oh, am. Um, people are coming in, <laughs> and they're freaking out about family coming in. People that have different philosophical views, and oh my God, he's a Republican, and I'm a Democrat. What are we going to talk about? Well, let's not talk about that subject. How about that for a good idea? So yeah, I'm seeing a lot of meltdowns. And just a little bit about the book, I wanted to share with you what this is a, a metaphor for, okay, for those Raise of it up you. in front of your face. Thank you. Thank there we you, go. Thank you. Too high. That's perfect. Okay, so there, there, you know, I always struggled with the book cover like every <laughs> author does. And finally, this is what. <laughs> That's the result. This is what I came up with yes. just because. And, then, and here, here's a tip of where it came from. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. It's panel eight. <laughs> wow. Okay. The DNA strands. So here's the metaphor is that uh, our past is dark, our future is light, colorful, and that we get to 
decode our past, which is the disconnected dots, and recode into our future and powerfully be the cause of healing human disconnect. Uh, so the idea was to use that DNA strand as a way to show that we can decode your past and recode your future. So there's the thinking behind the cover. And, um, and I'm, I'm really pleased to, to say that the book is selling really, really well. It's yeah. been flying out of my office. My patients are just gobbling it up, and people are buying the book for family members. So um, Yes, it, it is a perfect stocking stuffer. To stocking start your stuffer. year out right and New Year resolution is just read the book. Yeah, just start reading the book. And if you want to get on the show, all you do is call. The phone number is 323-843-2826. So get off your couch and get on our couch <laughs> with your emotional ouch. It's 323-843-2826. Yeah, so, so Judy's going to read a little bit of, from the book. Uh, okay. We're going to talk about what he, uh, PhD. Yeah, I want to read a little bit about how to dialogue with your family over the holidays and always and how to dialogue with anyone because uh, there's a way to detonate the conversation and there's a way to keep the conversation intact and maybe even work through issues. So this is then, something that and, I... And yes. we're going to be addressing that and more, obviously more in the show. Yeah, so I'm going to read you the dialogue so that you can hear it, and then when we get into the issues that Walt is going to present, uh, then we can see how the Peaceful Healing Dialogue, which I call the PhD, because you want to get your PhD in communication, um, you can see how it applies. So uh, for those of you who do have a copy of the book, it's on page 227, <laughs> uh, just in case you happen to be holding it as you're watching the show. <laughs> or you can actually go <laughs> online at drjudywtf.com under the resources tab and you can find the, the one page it's as complicated as it gets one page phd right there yeah it's right there it's free for <laughs> yeah. oh, anybody it's, wants it's it free. okay so uh peaceful healing dialogue starts with the premise that relationships begin to weaken then fail when we stop doing the things that it took to get them in the first place in other words, if we don't continue to invest in our relationships, if we take our relationships for granted, then um, they're going to fail us, period. Okay, so here are some of the principles of the Peaceful Healing Dialogue. Um, always respect each other. Be truthful, even when it hurts. Always include self-reflection, owning my own stuff. Always give the other person honest, rigorous feedback. Offer solutions on how to make things better. Keep each other interconnected, not disconnected. Offer the other a chance to address the issues that have caused the disconnection. Extend a bridge back to one another. Be ethical, transparent, and vulnerable. Well, that's a mouthful. Yeah. Ethical. What a concept. Well, it's vulnerable and transparent. That's, right. that's fun, too. Give each other a way to say no to any part of the relationship. Renegotiate or reshuffle the old system and, and update the files. Be kind and compassionate even when both partners do not agree. No blaming, sh shaming, criticizing, judging. This is really essential. No blaming, shaming, criticizing, or judging. Gently share with the other how the relationship is not working if it's not. Both partners must want to work on interconnection, reconnection, and ultimately unity. Sometimes the peaceful healing dialogue leads to peaceful healing delight, or sometimes to peaceful healing departure and divorce. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to apply this dialogue to things that can go wrong. And, and this is a call-in show. Please call in. We'd love to hear from you we your really Christmas would. stories. because. We know that Christmas time is a very loaded time for a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're getting together with relatives and everybody's got a history and baggage. So I thought I would start out seasonal stress. Let's face it. Some holiday related stress can be expected. Turkeys will be burned. Flights will be canceled. How you react determines how the holiday will be remembered. Mm -hmm. And the pressure hits some people harder than others. So how can you become one of those people who chuckles at adversity, silly snowstorm, instead of crying in your eggnog? Here are some suggestions. We're going to do that. So another thing here is why does conflict always seem to surface around the holidays? 
because that's often the time of the year that families get together, bringing along their spouses, partners, friends, in-laws, children, and pets, plus problems. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Which uh, decolades old hurts, resentments, jealousies, and other assortment of emotional baggage. Add some alcohol to the mix, Mm-hmm. And a blow up or two is practically guaranteed. I love it. You know, it, it, alcohol is called good cheer, but sometimes it's quite the contrary. And it's also the truth serum. So yeah, and it's when also you drink, the truth serum. then let down yeah. your guard and some truths come out of your mouth that maybe um, it's not a great time <laughs> no, for you to um, be revealing. So <laughs> this whole system is predicated on mother infant disconnect, father infant disconnect. So when mother, father, sister, brother, and of course, we've got sibling rivalry. Yes, we in do. here also. So when everybody shows up at the dinner table, um, the knife comes out, and sometimes <laughs> it's not the turkey that they're carving. So, um, so, so you can see that this this dinner or this party can can be a wonderful, wonderful event, or can be a concoction yeah. for bad blood, bad feelings. Bad feelings of yes. potpourri. And again, a lot of this, in my view, to to boil it down, is expectations. Right? If you're expecting an argument. Chances are you're going to find one. Absolutely. If you're expecting to have a good time, then you know what? Your perspective is, is a little different, and you may have a different outcome. One of the things I want to start with is an article, and just real quick, are triggers. Because, you know, pushing one's buttons, right? We all, in family, have a way to really piss somebody off or push their button by just saying something or doing something. And you know what? If you're an enabler then you'll give them more fuel and maybe have a meltdown, right? And I don't know if you want to expand on that, Dr. Judy, but triggers and enabling. Well, what happens is that everybody brings to the table um, their negative core beliefs, as, uh, as well as their light. So we're always playing with darkness and light. So everyone has darkness, everyone has light. And by negative core beliefs, we've talked about this on several episodes. Yes, lots. Um, that means that the wounds of childhood, they, um, they, they infiltrate into the fiber of a person's being, and then that person reacts from a primitive childhood state, and then as they develop these primitive um, encodings, so to speak, become verbal, and then they ingrain into a negative core belief like I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, I'm not special, I'm not important, I'm not competent. And I hear a lot of negative core beliefs in my practice. And one of the um, the key underpinnings to the Be the Cause Healing Human Disconnect system is to dismantle the negative core beliefs, heal the wounds that are behind At them, the foundation. and let the poison out yep. so that they don't get... Uh, internalized into the person, which causes depression, or projected out on family members or anybody else. And again, um, it really is a psychological virus. It is. And I the, call it a psychovirus. A psychovirus. Right. And the only way that you're going to get rid of that psychovirus is to debug it. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. to insert that software to debug it, you can't do it by yourself. No. Um, One of the quotes that I have in here is one of my favorite quotes by Einstein, which has to do with you can't solve a problem with the same mind that created it. So sometimes you need that outside perspective and you need to understand that um, you've got to let go to somebody else's feedback and give the other person an opportunity to uh, find your blind spot. And another another, uh, smart Einstein comment is definition of insanity. Right. If you continue to do the exact same thing and expect a different result, that's insane. Absolutely. Yeah, definition of insanity. And that's why we call the show Dr. Judy WTF, because WTF stands for what the Freud, and Freud was famous for his repetition compulsion. When we find ourselves repeating the same pattern over and over again, we find that we're stuck in a loop, and it's because there's some unfinished psychological business from our past. So I I thought I'd start with, I mean, we're talking about meltdowns, but... I wanted to be a little bit more proactive, which we've talked a little bit about in previous shows. Nine signs you're headed for a holiday meltdown. Hmm. So if you see any of these, you might want to take a step back and realize, "Hmm, if I really go down that road, um, I might have a meltdown. So I thought this would be be helpful to kind of, you know, 
paid it off at the past. First one is you have really super high expectations, as I mentioned. You tend to feel stress year-round because you're not meeting the expectations you set for yourself, but the holidays are likely to amplify those feelings mm -hmm. because there's just more going on. And, you know, whether it's you want to shop or you want to cook the perfect meal or, you know, Aunt Betty's coming and, you know, she's a real nitpicky, right? And she's got high expectations. Mm -hmm. So focus on what's realistic, not ideal. Remember, there's a big difference between the perfect job and the best job. And sometimes the effort it takes to do a perfect job really isn't worth it. So, or, and, you know, if you are focusing on what's realistic and not ideal, or you risk facing major disappointment when things don't go as planned. So, you know, just be realistic in your expectations uh, of yourself, most importantly, and that'll free up uh, some stress. And so when you live in the moment, you don't have expectations. Right. You're just enjoying the moment. Right. And part of the peaceful healing dialogue is really to, um, to respect people and to um, respect how they show up. Now, there's a thing called boundaries, right? Yes, there is and very so, much so. Um, um, panel number five actually is my representation of boundaries, which is really about making sure that you only take in as much good as possible and keep out as much bad as possible. So ideally you want to be a semi-permeable person so that you're flowing in the good and keeping out the bad. So if there's somebody at the dinner table that's really toxic to you, then be polite. Um, yeah, just validate it. you don't it, have but, to right, engage. Right. Uh, you know, just because we talk about unity and interconnection doesn't mean that everybody that you interconnect with is going to be healthy for you. So that you have to pick and choose who you let into your life and be very clear with yourself <laughs> that not everybody belongs on your mind map. You know, it's okay? funny. As it reminds Sometimes me of, it's uh, like, get off the map. <laughs> well, what, what's funny is two things. One, those of you that are listening to the show, you can go to Dr. Judy WTF and see the mind map. Uh, before you buy the book, or if you have the book, you can go see it in there. So and, go to drjudywtf.com, and, uh, and you can see the mind map. And, and also I noticed that when I um, Google my book, you can look inside and you can read quite a few pages of the book to oh, get cool. a feel for it. So mm -hmm. I think that's something, oh, that's cool. a nice feature that Amazon uh, offers. And what's interesting about relatives is, and I wanted to add this, is you can pick your friends and you can pick your nose but you can't pick your relatives. And they're all relative. And they're all <laughs> relative. <laughs> yes, they are. And hopefully relatable, And we too. would like to hear that story about your, <laughs> your crazy aunt or uncle. I've got a couple. Uh, and you can call us at area code 323-843-843. And one of the things that I wanted to speak about is that when I do my work with my patients, I kind of divide their family of origin into two parts, the people of today and the people who wounded mm. them because they too were wounded. So remember, mm -hmm. this is a multi-generational mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And so if your family of origin was wounding, then it's because they were wounded and their parents were wounded and they keep trickling it down to the next generation. And so when the person shows up to the office, uh, then, then it stops right there. We're not going further into spreading the psychovirus to the next generation. So that when you sit down at the dinner table, be aware that your wounders are sitting you know there. What? We've, with... got, we've got somebody that's called in. Oh, awesome, well. okay. Hey, thanks for calling. You're on the air with and on the couch with Dr. Judy. Hi. Hello? Yes, hello. Hi, Dr. Judy. Uh, this is Greg from Michigan. Hi, Greg. How are you? Nice to hear your voice. Thanks for listening and calling. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just listening to your topic, and um, it's, it's pretty interesting because I, I come from, you know, I'm pretty much a, a, a salvage title in my in, in my head um, from the disconnect that I grew up with with my family mm -hmm. and the last couple of years being able to share the holidays with my wife's family. I see how a normal family acts and it, it's kind of wonderful. It's like Christmas isn't the holidays aren't dark anymore. It's kind of refreshing, isn't it? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I come from a really, uh, I come from a really bad place. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And the one thing that I, I can't get over though is, I, is I feel almost like I'm like masquerading when I'm there, like I'm playing up to um, this normality that that I'm that I'm surrounded by, and mm-hmm. it's like almost like being out of my league. Okay, I want to speak. This is a thank you for calling in because you're bringing up such a very important point. Uh, number one, our parents set the bar. So in our mind, we don't think that anybody can exceed that. And then our core beliefs, our negative core beliefs, are down there where that bar is set so that when you examine your core belief, you might not feel that you're good enough for this family or worthy enough for this family. So you go into this beautiful family that has a better blueprint than your own, correct? Correct, absolutely. Okay, so you're not resonating with that uh, um, higher frequency of um, uh, uh, of light, so to speak. And so there, therefore you will always feel like, wait a minute, I don't belong here, I'm not good enough, I, I don't deserve it. I, I feel that... like I'm in costume. That you're a what? I feel like I'm in costume. In like costume I'm, or um, an imposter? I think... Uh, yeah, like like, like I'm like, a, I don't know, like, a, what do they call it? A covert... Uh... <laughs> operative? Covert, covert operative? Yeah, I, I shouldn't be there. I, you know, I I got this inner loser of myself that yeah, I just... Yeah. I, yep. I can't shake. And, yep. and even when I'm there, it's like, you know, I'm hiding that. And nobody knows that, you know, what the loser that I am. Even, <laughs> even with this wonderful atmosphere I'm in. You know, this is just what happens to us. We buy in. It's I call it a buy-in. We buy into our negative core belief, and this is how it starts. So mother uh, communicates uh, verbally, pre-verbally at first to infant the value of the infant. So if she's uh, not emotionally present, if she's not breastfeeding, eye contacting, skin contacting, being consistent, uh, having that uh, bond with with the child for the first two, three years of life in a, in a consistent way, then the child gets the message that they're not that important. And then when daddy comes along and starts knocking the child down even further with insults uh, or beatings or whatever, I'm just giving you a, a, an example you're here. Going, you're, you're right on track. Because, I am? You know, I have, okay. I, I, yeah, I don't know I how. I have a narcissistic father and a disconnected mother. And there it is. I, I, I was the target. I was the middle kid. I was the target. I don't know why. Um, and I used to rationalize, well, maybe I am bad and maybe I did deserve it. Maybe, I, you know, even as an adult now, I look back and I say, you know, well, maybe I did deserve it. Maybe I wasn't the best kid. But you then know, I think I was five years old. I was getting smacked to the ground. That's right. Now, do you have any children? <laughs> No, okay, no. So I had a if, couple, couple, couple fur babies, but okay. Would you ever treat um, your fur babies like that? No, I raised, I raised two, two of my nieces, and I, I, I look at them and I think, my God, how could someone treat a child like that? Well, guess who treated you like that? You just told us. So, is it any surprise that children will look to their parents as a way to value themselves? Does that surprise you? No. Okay. No. So yeah. even though I know, I, I, I know you're, you're, I, I know that you're a very intelligent man, and you even study psychology. See, I know all kinds of things about you. Okay. And well, as uh, a matter of fact, I, I, t- tomorrow is my last day of my master's program. I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to hear that, and and you will see this when you, when are you? Practicing? Congratulations, by the way. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Are you uh, interning at this particular point in time? Um, I actually start my Ph.D. program in um, uh, January, and I have my first residency set up for August of next year in Chicago. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, You know, I'm excited about that, but I'm at the point now with that, you know, and with my background, where I came from, my origins and, and, and my journey, it's like, okay, yeah, I have this degree now, and but I'm still my inner voice is saying, "Yeah, but you're still an unemployed loser." 
Right, that's how strong this negative core belief is. It grabs you by the throat and it takes you under. And then when you show up in a family that uh, is reflecting a higher sense of worth, a higher sense of self, then you don't feel like you belong. And that's the costume and that's the mask that, that you're referring to because you don't think that you're authentically any more than that loser that your parents blueprinted you with. So do you see logically how you know that that's just a bunch of BS, correct? Logically. Right, but it right. feels like lip service when I tell myself. Right. Well, if I might interject, um, one thing that's helped me, because you know, I've had this issue, is in front of it, instead of saying to yourself, I'm, I'm a loser, put the word why in front of it. Why am I a loser? And then what will happen is your subconscious will start to break it down. And if you break it down in pieces, it's because blah, blah, blah. Well, that, that's an issue. And then you can go, well, no, that's not true because, right? And then you're going to get well, something else I, in your I'm head. I'm glad you brought that up because, I, you know, I listen to you guys all the time. And I remember you Thank talking you. about positive self-talk. Yes. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I thought, that, and it really resonated with me, was instead of, you know, just making these, you know, these statements, exactly. ask a question. Put it in a question. Start you know, that what, dialogue, and it works. It, 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 yes, it, it, it does. It gets my brain going, well, well why are you a loser? That's why it, can't you be a winner? Because your brain is forced to answer the question, and now it's dissecting it, and you mm -hmm. can address whatever issue or issues there are, and you can go, well, that's not true because. And therefore, you're logically... Um, breaking it down, and then you can add emotion to it, and then you can dissolve it. And then you begin to separate mm -hmm. who you are exactly. out from what happened to you. Exactly. And, and one, one tool that I find really, really essential to breaking free from this negative core belief is indignation. Okay? And, um, okay. Uh, and sometimes, and this is a really delicate issue because I mentioned this over and over again in the treatment and the book, that um, parents are the cause of part one of our lives, but they're not at fault. In other words, they were damaged. Okay, so when we look at the big picture, again, it's a multi-generational trickle-down thing. So what, what parent who's healthy is going to blueprint their kid with, you're a loser? Obviously, your parents were not in a healthy place at the time that they uh, parented you, okay? So now uh, you have that because every child will eat in, eat up that um, impression that the parents put on them because they look to their parents as if they're gods. Right. Mom, Dad, you're the source. You're the source of who I am. And so if childhood you say, is a hostage situation. It, it really is, mentally also, mm -hmm. because whatever your parents are messaging to you, you buy in, and you buy in, and you buy in. And by the time you develop into uh, a, a teenager and so, so on, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can rebel against that negative core belief. It's stuck in there, and then you show up at your wife's family's house, and then you feel that um, you've bought in so far with this negative core belief that even the mirroring of who they are and who your wife is and how amazing you've progressed in your own career and have a master's degree, you know, listen, everybody, this man has a master's degree. He has an amazing wife. He's got most of the things that uh, people would die to have, great family, great uh, career path, and yet, how do you feel inside? My inner voice is, you're a loser. Well, right. you know what? What you're also doing, and we've talked about this in previous shows is, and it's a very guilty thing, is you're comparing your worst to their best. Believe me, they're all dolled up, they're dressed up, they're putting on their happy, smiley face, and you never know, in the back of their mind, they may be thinking, God, what a loser I am. So you have to remember, do you not know, set yourself up it, for failure. It, Don't compare your worst to their best. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. There's such a positive energy around them. It's like, it's like something I've never experienced in, in my lifetime. And, you know, we got married last year. Um, cool. We actually went Great. to high school together and we reconnected years after. Beautiful. Um, Wonderful. But it's, it's, it's just so different to me. I mean, it's, it's hard to say because the holidays before were always, they always had, to, it was a dark energy like you were talking before. And that part at least is gone. 
Well, you but know what's I, inter- that's good. what's interesting in this dynamics is that uh, you know I talked about the semi permeable membrane and the non permeable membrane. When you've been damaged at the causal level, you know I call it the double dungeon of darkness. When your mother damaged you and your father damaged you, then you don't have a hero that lets you out of the psychological prison. Okay, so what happens is that you're not able to let in the light. You're not able to let in the nourishment because you've already shut down to the belief that you are worthy. So I just want you to take in uh, that um, indignation is a really great pathway for you to get out of jail. And what who you've been indignant against all these years is yourself. Okay, you've been blaming, shaming, criticizing yourself for being this low self-esteem person. And I'm saying to you that turn this around and throw it back to cause and we'll keep working uh you'll keep working on this uh notion because once you throw it back to cause then you can start to get a sense of freedom from this horrific core belief that you bought into i know we how much time do we have Uh, well well, uh, what i also wanted to add is a few um you don't want to should on yourself Mm-hmm. S-H-O-U-L-D, because you know what? If, if, you, if you're doing that, basically, as you drive down the road, you're staring in the rearview mirror, and there's a whole gigantic windshield in front of you, and if you focus too much in the rearview mirror, you'll know th- that you're going to crash. And, and also, Greg, when you look at yourself mm-hmm. and you look at the world and you look at yourself as a loser and you look at the world as better than you, just with... Um, just have this notion that you're looking at yourself and the world through a cracked lens of perception. It's really, really important for you to know that. It's like me driving my car without my glasses. I've got to know that that sign uh, is not blurry. The sign's not blurry. There's something wrong with my eyesight. So if I put my glasses on, the sign will go into focus. And that, those letters are not blurry, I assure you. So, and also remember... Like, 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 like oh, having out a washer fluid on your windshield. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Precisely. And we've got another call, so you know what? We're going to take that, Greg, so you have a very merry. And thanks for calling. All right, keep congratulations listening. congratulations on the book. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you so much for calling in, Greg. Bye-bye. Take care. All right, bye-bye. Okay, good night. Hi, you're on the air with Dr. Judy. Can you turn your uh, computer hey, down? Hey, Walt? Yes. Hey, Walt, this morning. How are you? Good, and yourself? Dr. Judy's Hi, taken. how are you? Oh, wait a second. Am I on with you guys now? You are on as we you speak, are live on air. Oh, my on goodness. Air. Yes, How you amazing. are. I'm watching it streamed, and it, uh, the timing's a little different. Well, hello, guys. Hey. Hey, hi. I can't hi. see you, but I guess you can <laughs> see us. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, since we're on, if I can just, um, I actually have a question. I was listening to, um, I was listening to the previous caller uh-huh. and how he was feeling over the holidays with his partner to be like in a, you know, in a family where it was like, what a, you know, what a great family. And he felt a little bit out of place. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting uh, because, well, to get to my question, I just wanted to briefly set up the context for the caller so that I can better relate. I pretty much, I went through um, over a year of very intense therapy. I went through Dr. Judy's entire mind map. And um, pretty much was at the panel eight and nine of the process of integrating everything that I had healed, everything that I had, you know, processed uh, to integrate it all into my new uh, rebirth self, um, which put me at the place of rebuilding my life. Uh, Something happened last week, which was the patriarch of our entire family. Uh, My grandfather passed away. Wow, so and I was with my entire family, and something shifted and something happened this weekend, um, which was uh, I had closure with my grandfather in October, okay. and it's interesting, in all of my sessions, I never had any baggage or any, you know, my grandfather, you know, as Dr. Judy says, the mother and the father are always the cause of part one of our lives. I never had anything really to pin on my grandfather. Uh, Yet, knowing that, when my grandfather passed, there was a a release. Something has shifted in me after going through the process with Dr. Judy. And that's, I I feel a greater sense of freedom, a greater sense of, like, um, 
now my father is his own person and, and my mother's their own person and my uncles are their own person. And it's more of a sense of, wow, I really am free, completely unchained to re- continue rebuilding my life. Can you talk a bit about that? Like uh, it's so the grandfather figure, you're, what you're, they have to do in you, our role? You know, you're absolutely right that your grandfather was never, quote, an issue, correct? But, Correct. but yet we know that your grandfather was the father of your father. This is your, your father's father, right? And that you had issues with, uh, with your father. So where do those issues come from? His, his own wounds. Right. And where did those come from? His parents. Right. So sometimes grandparents can be wonderful to the next generation because they don't have those psychosocial pressures on them like finances or um, you know crying babies or what whatever's going on so sometimes grandparents are actually better parents for the next generation so I, I find that interesting but I, I think what you're speaking to is some sort of a release and some so that your grandfather was a big light to you and yet in some way, logically, you know that he must have been some form of a shadow to your father. And so death is the biggest release. No, I, I mean, I, I can remember being at my father's bedside when he released into death. And um, sometimes when people release into death, they actually bring a lot of light into the room. And so I'm, I'm just imagining that when he died there's a sense that you're incorporating his spirit into you and at that's the same, exactly what it feels like that that i've had that experience it so i know exactly what you're time, feeling and i thought it was going to be empty you know Walt, yeah. when my my dad passed i thought i was going to feel empty and i felt very full so did you yes. have that full feeling also when your grandfather i had an overwhelming peace and yeah. a full feeling and that he is integrated into me mm-hmm. and i also feel a freedom from what was the burdens of my father and the blame on my father that I felt he wouldn't add up to things he wouldn't add up to doing Mm -hmm. and uh, ways I didn't fully understand that he was wounded or my, or my mother by her parents. Mm -hmm. Yet my grandpa's passing has somehow helped me release any, any remaining weight from my parents. Do do, do you you feel they sometimes they're with you? Do you ever ever feel his presence? Do you ever feel his presence at all? Oh yeah, this was just like a week ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I I, just, I feel like he's integrated in yes. me. It was just yep. interesting how he he left and yet he my he, parents got off the hook a little more. Well, he's le- he left, but in some respects, I believe he's he's with you more. That's interesting. And, and, and you know, also I wanted to add to that that he's with you more, and also when we are in our darkness, when we're in our um, crack lens of perception state, when we're in our wounded self, I call it the little eye in the book, as you remember, versus the big eye, which is the soul self. So when we when we go into the death piece, okay, when we release and we. Then, then all of the darkness burns off and nothing's left but the soul, okay? So there's, you know, his, his, um, his injuries are no longer. So now he's restored. You know, he's restored. He goes back to the light. So does that make sense to you? So that all those human, uh, his human um, wounds that were uh, expressed or um, projected, let's say, onto your father, that is just no longer. He's now his soul, spiritual self. I can see light. that that puts the shift psychologically. It, it, it makes it make sense as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's neat. And your book, Healing Human Disconnect. I'm very excited. I feel like everybody, that book's amazing. Thank can you, you talk very, a little bit about much. your book? Absolutely. Sure. Uh, We've got, well, a, few, we got it, a couple minutes. Uh, it, it was conceived 14 years ago. It was a macro model. It was called Join the Human Race, Healing Global Disconnect at the time. And I uh, decided that I, I, I couldn't do 
healing global disconnect because I needed to do healing human disconnect as a psychologist. I had patients that I was responsible for and I had to heal the, the, the injured psyche. Although we all know that what's happening in the world today, all the crises that we're having, all the killings and all the isms that are clashing. Isms for sure. You know, I, I started writing Healing Global Disconnect. I'm going to... It's our next book. It's our next book. Yes, it's going to take a while, but I'm going to write it. It'll be called uh, Be the Cause Healing Global, Global Disconnect. Disconnect. Oh, I have a feeling it's going to come out a lot faster than I this one. I don't know. I don't know. I, I need a little break from this one. But, <laughs> sure. you know, ultimately, Monique, the book was um, w- w- became a seed level thought when I said the words to um, a friend of mine, um, isn't it time that we join the human race? And that was the beginning. That was 14 years ago. And so what I decided to do was draw a mind map for healing, which started with uh, source energy and the wounds of childhood and how they encode and how that encoding causes chaos, defenses, and breakdowns in our life and then shifts us out. And we have to understand that we are the cause of part two of our lives and that if we didn't have that wonderful secure attachment and those wonderful uh, role models and blueprints, we still have the opportunity to uh, heal that and reconnect to ourselves and reconnect to other human beings in a more... um, enlightened way and so that 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 pretty much sums up the book and um again i i just you know really thank you for calling in yeah, and thanks. uh have it have me talk about the book we've talked about the book and so now i'm actually very very happy to be complete with it and it's the end of the year so i i you I can actually enjoy the really holidays great completion <laughs> yeah. and um yeah i'm just Really, really excited to share it with people because there's a lot of information. Hopefully, I said it in a way, I wrote it in a way that's very relatable and not too, quote, heavy and theoretical and psychological, although there is quite a bit of educational uh, material in there. And I feel like it can be a, a way to walk someone through their own healing, you know, that's, with the book, a that, practical application of the things and it'll take rolling up some of the sleeves because the work the work you 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 do beside and patients do beside with you it it's it takes work to heal yes it does and and that's why there's the section sections after each chapter think like a shrink and yes you're right this is a journey through from through to to. from the darkness to the light from the past through the chaos of the present to a paradigm shifted to healing so um, yes, it is. People can take the book and use it as a uh, uh, a journey from through to. Beautiful. Thank you guys for answering my well, questions. Well, you thanks for calling and being on air and being a part of our show and have a very very Merry Christmas and New Year. Yeah, thank you Everybody so much. Everybody, happy calling. holidays. Happy, happy holidays. holidays. Thank you. Well, wow, there you go. Two calls, and we've got like... Uh, we love call-ins. We do. We mm-hmm. absolutely love... We live for call-ins. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got about uh, maybe 10 minutes. Okay, so okay. So I can... What I'd like to do is just whiz through this, Please uh, these... Please do, the, yeah. The, the, the nine and signs I, I, we've headed for a holiday meltdown. Mm-hmm. So number two is we all tend to overbook. Uh, you know, you know whether it's between you know the office party, the family commitments, the one day sales. You know, you're stretched way, way too thin. And, and the lines, right? And, and all the lines <laughs> yeah. and sleep and exercise actually mm-hmm. get uh, um, put to, put in the back burner, which is a, two of those things which are really, really helpful to relieve stress and keep you from having a meltdown. So the the solution is say no. You don't have to say yes to everything, or you can go come late, leave early, kind of sorta. Right, you don't have, have to yourself. do it all. And mm-hmm. one of the no. one of the key uh, ways to take care of yourself during the holidays is to eat well and do your workout. I prefer yoga just because I leave the sweat on the mat. I don't, you know, want to 
carry all that tension with me all day. So it's a place for me to just dump it all. And so if you have a place like that where you can just dump it all, dump it all. And a great way to show up to family events is to be as much psychologically and physically prepared as possible. So if you're feeling great, if you're walking in there right after a workout or eating clean food and drinking a lot of water, then even though you're probably going to get a little polluted that night, you know, it's just sort of like... It'll it'll, it'll mitigate the damage. It'll mitigate. Yeah. yeah. So prioritize, basically. And sometimes maybe have boundaries. We've been talking a lot about this, and we're going to do more next year. You know, be say no, and, and maybe somebody's going to overstep their bounds. Well, mm-hmm. you know what? Back off and, and say no. Mm-hmm. It, you know, you have to live with you. Um, again, we tend to drink a little more when we're stressed, right? Alcohol is, is a depressant, and it, uh, we're open to more of a major meltdown when we're depressed. Also, it amplifies things as well. Mm-hmm. And maybe, you know, people will say things they just really shouldn't. Right. So you might want to be careful of that one. Yeah, the repression that people keep in because they've not had uh, the ability or the... Um, uh, the, yeah, the ability or the comfort to say it to their family of origin, whatever they're feeling, somehow the holidays and the alcohol, sometimes those re- repressed feelings come out. And that's not a really great time to release. Not in front, of, do that, not in front of God and family and everybody. Do that another day. Do that hopefully in therapy and do it with the peaceful healing dialogue. Or, you know... In light of the holidays, you know, you tend to eat a little more and we gain a few pounds, mm-hmm. your clothes become tighter. And that, you know, holiday eating is stressing you out. And, oh, I love this line. Holiday eating is stressing you out and the holiday stress is making you eat. Vicious cycle It's me. a very vicious yeah. cycle. Right. And so as a result, you feel stressed because you just can't get those jeans on as well as you used to. And it's like, holy moly, I want to wear these jeans and... They're just not. So the basically the solution is enjoy holiday meals guilt-free by planning ahead for the splurges. That way you can indulge smartly mm-hmm. without derailing your diet. And just I know it's easier said than done when, you, when you're looking at all those holiday cookies and the, that eggnog is just calling you. You know, one, one thing that I want to also um, communicate is that if you're going to overeat and you're going to have all of these bad foods, um, I like to go with better bad foods. Like if I'm going to have chocolate, I want to have organic chocolate, dark chocolate. At least it's an antioxidant. If I'm going to have uh, something really splurgy, then go to some place like, uh, you know, more of a health food store so that you're not, you're, you know, that you're, you're satisfying the cravings, but you're not ending up with the, um, the, as many of the toxins and uh, all the chemicals. Easier said than done, but it can be done. And a couple more real quick. You're struggling with depression or another health problem. So, you know, feeling depressed at this time of year can be really, really difficult because you're expected to be up and happy and, you know, joyous. So, you know, being open and honest about your emotions ahead of time uh, with people that are close to you might be helpful. And that way you've got some folks in your corner and um, that makes life, of course, a lot easier anytime. And try not to be alone for the holidays if you... uh, If you find yourself alone, then try to get in with a group, a church, a synagogue, um, some sort of a social group that has Christmas or the the New Year's already set up so that you can be a part of. And lastly, which is along those lines, Mm -hmm. you are married to tradition. Traditions are one of the sweetest parts of holidays, but sorry, some plans change. So, you know, treasure your traditions, but be open to new ones. Mm -hmm. Um, Be flexible and willing to compromise. Holiday is all about more about uh, what you eat and where you eat than uh, the price of the gift and stuff like that. So beautiful. anyway, so just be a little proactive in realizing that, hey, man, I'm really possibly heading for a meltdown. Even if you're in a situation, which other stuff, and we don't have time to that, is, you know, you're with a family member and it's just not working out. You can go for a walk. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not you're not a prisoner there. You can no, go for not a walk. you're in a childhood hostage Mm-mm. situation. No, you're not. And remember that the people that are sitting around the dinner table also have their negative core beliefs. So, one of the uh, yeah the, one one of the key healing elements in the universe is is love and empathy. So instead of being angry at the person, you can also understand that if that person isn't behaving really well, it's probably because they are. Um, they're injured, and that's what they look like when they're injured. 
So we are now going to whiz through our segment, uh, Shrink That Tune. And it's a song by uh, someone that Judy knows. It's entitled, Here's Johnny. Now, I'll warn you, it's not much of a Christmas song, but it's got some mm-hmm. baggage associated with it and some stuff. So we're just going to give it a shot. So here's Johnny, and it's, it's by Derek. Johnny's built up with a lot of emotions. Heart is pounding, beating when I'm causing commotion. It's hard to tell him, you had to tell him Comet when they started the motion. Mad at my mom because she doesn't even know me. Tried with my dad, broken promises were flowing. Damn it, Johnny, I'm really messing lonely uh, telling your sister call me. I got her a gift, tell her I love her, and it, and it's her that I miss. Okay, well, we are talking about family disconnect. So this is a person who's super angry. And why is he angry? Because he's built up a lot of emotions. And so, you know, you don't want to show up uh, with a lot of emotions plus alcohol with um, issues uh, toward your mom. He's mad at the mom. Why? Because she's been not connecting with him. Yeah, disconnected. It's not, not, um, not right disconnected and dad obviously is not a connected person either because uh, he's broken his promises Um, he's lonely and uh, at least he seems to have some kind of connection with his sister well don't we're not gonna leave dad out here well dad I don't give a shit what about me and what I happened to you or kid grew up with a twitch biting my skin all you did was argue and make a mess of my life. It sounds like he's not taking responsibility. You did your best by yelling at your wife. She did her best by cheating every night. Put me in the middle of every fight. Then have the audacity to make me choose a side. Okay, so here's a guy that's been monkey in the middle. Yeah, and so, middle. so you said something about taking responsibility, but don't forget we're not the cause of part one of our lives. So yes, we take responsibility by healing through this, but this guy's been monkey in the middle for so long and he's saying, what kind of role models have you been? And also, by the way, not only uh, are you horrible role models, but now I have symptoms because you've been behaving. Now I'm twitching and biting my skin. So these are his reactions to the wound and his defense mechanisms. And what about mine? What about Chris? What about the love you try to implement? Giving up on me, now you want to come on back? Was it drugs or the fact that Crystal doesn't care? Never ask me how I'm doing. Never ask me about my music. Mom's not better, but she's so clueless, shoving money down my throat. And I'm done chewing. Well, it's intense. I mean, Mm -hmm. this person has a lot of feelings. So, um, you know, giving up on me. Now you want to come on back. Like, in other words, that cat's in the cradle. You know, you've done nothing for me. And now you want to be a part of my life. Mm -mm, Don't think so. Uh, Was it drugs or the fact that Crystal doesn't care? Like, in other words, he's trying to figure out why he was so ignored. And that's it. He's never he's never asked about his passion. Music is his passion. So he feels like he's not cared about. And mom does great defense mechanism by shoving money down his throat. Uh, pr- but that's pr- not what people need. No. It's not money. That's it's guilt the, motivated. It's the, it's the love and the connection yeah. that they yeah. need. And he's not yeah. he's not eating it. He's done <laughs> chewing. No, he, right. He's got indigestion. Right. And then we have our chorus. You both don't know how I feel. I'm eating at the co. Really, I don't know how I feel. You both don't know how I feel. I'm eating at the co, and my blood's ready to spill. So then we got verse two. Yeah, so he's not doing well with this atmosphere here. He's like bleeding and being eaten. Hello, Mom. You think you got away? Always screaming at me saying you're giving me away? Telephone calls to the little boy's home, and you don't need to. Pay well. Guess what, Mom? That's not okay. I'm sick. I'm done with all your little girl games. Yeah, so he's not buying into her ploys and reminding her what a horrible thing to do to try to reject him, give him away, the ultimate. Yep, reality Mm -hmm. check. You cheated on Dad, and that's a fact. Spending all this money trying to buy a piece of my love. Repeatedly saying that I'm the grateful. Maybe it's y'all who are far from faithful. Right, so he's giving it back here. He's saying, look, you know... Look at yourself in the mirror and see your behavior and own it. 
I don't need a hug. What I need is a blunt stop what you're doing. I want to be done. It's getting us nowhere. I'm cutting the rope. Myself, I'm done killing. I'm, I've given me hope, except that I'm willing to cut at the throat or the issue I'm facing both parents provoke. Well, he sounds pretty healthy in the sense that he's mm-hmm. trying to cut the rope with his family of origin. He's done ki- he's done killing himself with this, and so he's just going to, um, you know, um, he's just going to cut that tie as much as he can yeah, with his separate, parents. Separate, separate and distance himself and Correct. have some boundaries. Right. right. And then we've got, uh, I was never sober, but all for five months. Smoking ain't over. It's just starting up. Finding inner closure, I'm ch- and I'm charging up, not your average stoner, because I'm doing what I love. Okay, so he's talking about all his defense mechanisms. You know, it's the smoking, the drugs, right? And so he can't find his inner peace because that's what what he's doing is better than what he was getting from his family of origin in the way he feels about it. Because you don't know how I feel. Both are eaten at the co, and their never hearts will never heal. You both don't know how I feel. Both are eaten at the core. Renewed vowels will never real. We're never real. So he's talking about his parents and the cheating, and they're you know maybe together again, but it's not okay because it's. I think what he's saying is it's fake. You know. Yes, it's all fake. Renewed vowels are just mm-hmm. fake. They're yeah. they're never real. Mm-mm. And he suffers because of the chaos at home. And he's trying to be real to himself as well as uh, everybody else. Right. And escape that family of origin. Mm -hmm. So that has been Here's Johnny by Derek. We're going to close with that song. And uh, we want to really appreciate all the calls. All the comments, all the subscribing, and all the likes on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You can write us if you want any information at all of some of the notes we've done this year or questions at Dr. Judy. Uh, info at drjudywf.com. I'm your host, Walt Lusk, and of course, Dr. Judy Rosenberg. So we're going to close out. God bless everyone. Have an amazing holiday, and we're going to start all Have over an again amazing holiday. next Happy year. Happy New Year. And Happy New Year. <laughs>